Today we're going to talk about the blood and lymph vascular system. We want to look at the layers of the vascular wall, what are the components in the wall. We want to learn how to classify different vessels, arteries, veins, um, capillaries, and then look at variation in the microvasculature. And then we end up by looking at the lymphatic system. Enjoy. Blood and lymphatic vessels. We want to talk about the layers of the vascular wall, classification of vessels, variation in microvasculature, and lymphatic system. Now, multicellular animals like us need three mechanisms one, to distribute oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and other information mediators, to collect from cells waste and to transport waste to extratoric organs. And this is accomplished by the cardiovascular system. And here you can see the muscular heart, the arteries, uh, veins, as well as the kidneys, which are the extratory organs. Now the cardiovascular system is composed of two closed sets of pipes. You have those that come from the heart to the lung and go back to the heart and then you go have those that go from the heart uh, throughout the rest of the body and return to the heart. Uh, if you look at this, where well, you see different blood vessels uh, at the bottom, uh, the heart uh, produces the blood pressure through the uh, systole when it contracts, and when it does so, it causes a pulse in the blood vessels all the way up till you get to the capillaries. Capillaries, there's no more pulse. It's just a steady flow after that part in time. You can see the velocity increases with the heartbeat and also the pressure uh, changes with the heartbeat uh, as well. Uh, the greatest uh, surface area is in capillaries where you have gases exchange and uh, exchange of nutrients and waste and things occur. But you also have the lowest velocity at that, at that uh, point in time. And what we'll learn today is that blood vessels are structurally adapted for physical requirements, that is to withstand the pressure that we see here, and metabolic needs, or to be thin-walled so they can have exchange uh, when you have the capillaries. And what we'll learn is that there's smooth muscle uh, to resist the pressure. Also, we'll learn that there's elastic tissue They'll help recall uh, to maintain the pressure uh, during um, diastole. And then as you go back toward the heart, you pick up smooth muscle again with the veins and even some elastic tissue on the way back to the heart. Now, elastic arteries coming right out of the heart, these elastic arteries up here, the aorta and such, uh, uh, every time the heart uh, contracts, they expand and then they recall because of elastic tissue in there helping maintain the pressure between 120 to 100 millimeters of mercury. Now muscular arteries as we see here the distinct internal uh, elastic lamina uh, and uh, a lot of muscle in the wall it distributes blood and maintains pressure. And then when you get smaller you get arterioles and they're responsible for the peripheral resistance. They are like the oil filter in our car to maintain pressure. They resist pressure and in doing so they maintain pressure and distribute blood. Next come is our capillaries and we see cross sections of capillaries, longitudinal views of capillaries and exchange of nutrients and waste. And then we have venules and venules where we uh, collect blood from capillaries and also uh, from interstitium also goes into there and also this is where edema occurs where you have leaky blood vessels sometimes. If we look at the atlas view of arteries uh, we see there's a muscular wall, there's a, a, a connective tissue on the outside as well and then we have endothelial uh, lining. Endothelium lines all blood vessels whether capillaries or arteries and veins as we can see. Now, if we look in the vascular wall, 
uh, we first of all see what touches blood is the tunic intima. Intima is composed of endothelial cells. Remember, endothelium comes from mesoderm. In some vessels, you have a subendothelial connective tissue, and in an artery, muscular artery, you have the internal elastic lamina, as we see here. All that is the intima. The media is a smooth muscle layer. Smooth muscle layer in through there, uh, and it could be elastic fibers, and it could have an external elastic lamina right in through there. Uh, the, the outside layer is a tunica adventitia, and that's connective tissue, connective tissue that we see there. However, if it's in large hanging veins, you may actually have intima, media, and then the adventitia, you will have uh, smooth muscle, longitudinally uh, disposed as opposed to cross and, and opposed to uh, circular muscle. Circular muscle we see uh, in arteries, but in veins you can have longitudinal muscle, especially hanging long hanging veins. So here we see the artery in the, in the atlas, um, um, artery and then uh, venial in through there, more little small arteries um, and, um, and venules, a lymphatic vessel here. But here we see uh, artery, uh, smooth muscle, we can see different layers of it, a smaller artery radiant through there, maybe arteriole through here, and these are venules, big uh, space for the wall thickness is a venule. Again, uh, we can see an artery, very distinct uh, uh, muscle layer, uh, advent tissue here, media, and the intima on the inside. Here we see a vein, and so a thin uh, wall uh, for a large um, lumen, uh, also a regular shaped lumen, as opposed to a nice uh, spherical lumen in that case, and also we have valves. Valves are in veins, they're not in arteries. Also, if you look at this large vein, you can see that you do have some circular muscle here in the media, but in the adventitia, you have longitudinal disposed smooth muscle as we see here and as we see in this uh, real vein. Now, coming from the heart, you have the aorta, which is elastic. You have the intima, which is composed of endothelial cells uh, and the subendothelial connective tissue, and then you have the media and then the advent tissue. If you look at there, uh, you can sub endothelial, endothelial connective tissue, and then we start picking up muscle uh, layers and elastic fibers in here. Uh, in the lungs, again, we can see uh, elastic um, arteries where you can see the elastic fibers running through there. Entomo is endothelial cell, muscle in through there, and then the advent tissue. Media, entoma, advent tissue. Uh, in the fallopian tube, we see some different, we have mus muscular arteries, intima in through there, internal elastic lamina, very distinct over here too, uh, and then the media and advent tissue. As opposed to this uh, vein, we have a thin wall of muscle and advent tissue, but you do have the endothelium uh, in through there. Here we see a little capillary, which the whole thing is like one cell uh, with a space uh, in the middle uh, of that capillary. Uh, here, little, starting little small venules in through there, but we can see other capillaries in view. Uh, in the renal uh, artery going into the, into the kidney, we see the internal elastic lamina. Uh, this is the intima, media, and the advent tissue, the connective tissue. This is nerve in through there. But then here's a vein, and we can see the longitudinally disposed muscle in the advent tissue. If we have a closer view of the muscle cells uh, in the intima, here we see uh, uh, endothelial cells lining the lumen. Here's marginal folds where you have junctions between a couple of endothelial cells. Um, and then you have an internal elastic lamina, and all this is intima. And then the media. The media is where you have the muscle cells 
uh, smooth muscle cells. You can see the apical cavioli in these smooth muscle cells. You can see no striations uh, in these with some, um, we, we see organelles therein, but a lot of filaments. And also, you note these fusiform densities. These densities, some of them are on the plasma membrane, as you see there. Others are inside the cell, and these are where different fibers uh, are, are bound to one another. So we have one, two, three smooth muscle cells in this little arteriole. And if you look at a venule, you see there's less smooth muscle cells around uh, the cavity than in an arteriole. Arteriole has a high density of uh, smooth muscle cells, thus a thick media, more thin media uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the venule. In a capillary, this is endothelial cells lining the, the capillary. And if you follow in through, you see the basal lamina. And there is a cell that's inside the basal lamina. This is a pericyte. Not sure exactly what that does. Maybe it moves along through here and cleans out the basal lamina. Uh, we're not sure uh, what the pericyte is, but you do have pericytic uh, uh, capillaries uh, in, in, in the blood. Here we see another capillary uh, in through here with the endothelial cells. Uh, uh, and you can see junctions, tight junction between adjacent endothelial cells. And you can see the marginal folds, a fold that flaps over uh, the junction to prevent uh, rippage to occur. And here, if we look at uh, three different types of capillaries uh, in muscle, we have a continuous uh, capillary uh, which uh, does not have holes or, or in, in the wall. Uh, in the kidney and adrenal, you have a fenestrated capillaries where you have little holes in the wall. And both of these have a, in, have a distinct uh, basal lamina around the endothelial cells. Uh, in contrast, uh, the sinusoidal or discontinuous capillary has gaping holes in there and fluid inside there can bathe uh, the parenchymal cells uh, located on the outside with the fluid. The fluid can go right through. In this case, uh, the basal lamina uh, is either missing or, or is incomplete. And we can see those again, electron microscope. Um, here's a continuous capillary. So this is the endothelial cell in through there, the lumen there, Collagen. This is extracellular matrix. There's a basal lamina uh, of this uh, continuous basal lamina of the continuous one, and you have channels and you have vesicles pinching through. And then here we see the fenestrated ones, and this is where the endothelial uh, cell begins very thin at these fenestra, and that will allow a lot of fluid uh, to come through, and you have these uh, in endocrine and also in the in the kidney. In contrast, in the liver, uh, you have these gaping holes, the big gaps, uh, and the basal lamina is not continuous. And so fluid can bathe the parenchymal cell, which happened to be hepatocyte in this case, and it's located in the space of these, right in through there, the fluid will go in through there, uh, uh, and you have maximum uh, interaction between the parenchymal cells and the fluid inside there. So with uh, continuous uh, capillaries, the basal lamina is complete. And we find that in muscle, uh, testis, brain, thymus, places where you can't have edema. You can't have edema in your muscle and you certainly can't have it uh, in your brain or your testis. Uh, fenestrated capillaries have complete basal lamina and you get those in the glomerulus and also in the adrenal. Uh, a discontinuous or sinusoidal uh, is incomplete or lacking basal lamina, and we see that in liver, spleen, bone marrow. And in these cases, you have uh, white blood cells moving through and red blood cells moving through. Uh, in the liver, uh, which we see here, you want to bathe uh, these uh, hepatocytes uh, with the fluid from uh, blood to be able to clean it. Uh, here we see uh, a tongue. Um, so there's a, the surface of the tongue, the epithelium, but this is the muscle. If we look at the muscle, in between these muscle cells, there's one cell here and another cell here, uh, the perimesium uh, has 
that is, sorry, the endomesium, endomesium around each one of these uh, has capillaries. And you can see the little capillaries, the lumen of the capillaries into there and the endothelial cells aligning uh, each one of those. These are continuous capillaries. Now you have fenestrated capillaries in the adrenal for exchange between uh, hormones between these cells uh, and the uh, and the um, the spaces where blood goes through in these sinuses. Now in bone marrow, uh, you need uh, sinusoidal capillaries because you need for the the bone marrow cells here. You see a neutrophil here um, develop extravascularly and they have to migrate into the bloodstream. So therefore you have big spaces where these cells can migrate uh, into there. Here we see another one right over here um, um, so that uh, blood cells have to migrate from the outside into the bloodstream. Also we have sinusoidal in the liver and here you can see the sinuses going through there uh, in through here and through here um, and uh, and the fluid is is drained through there with with sinusoidal capillaries in between these hepatocytes. Now, if you look at the, the vein, here's a, a large vein here, which is a hepatic portal vein going to the liver from the intestine, and we can see that. We see the higher mag, uh, we can see the large vein with the, uh, with the longitudinal disposed spoon muscle in the advent tissue. Now, when you compare these two, look at the surface epithelium. And this is the bile duct here, which has simple columnar epithelium as opposed to uh, endothelium lining this vein. This is endothelium here, simple columnar there. Don't confuse the two. Uh, also in large veins, in addition to having uh, longitudinal disposed muscle in the advent tissue, so this would be media, intima, in through there in the, in the advent tissue, you also have valves, and here we see valves here. These are fat cells here, but this is a large vein, another large vein uh, in through there. We see another one, uh, valves in the vein. Uh, there's a lymphatic that we have, but here we see the endothelial cells lining that valve and your little artery in through there. So we have the heart, the main component that that causes the blood pressure with the contraction uh, of the heart and the closing of the various valves. And as I mentioned, uh, the right side goes to the lungs and the left side goes to the rest of the body. That's why the left side heart is bigger than the other one. If you look at the muscle of heart, you have cardiac muscle. And here we can see the striations that we have, the A and I band, like we had before. In addition to these, striations of the sarcomere, um, which is one sarcomere is between two Z lines and then there's another one that's a functional unit uh, and the um, anatomical unit uh, of the uh, striated muscle. We, in, in cardiac muscle you have an additional uh, band here and this is the intercalated disc. This is the junction between uh, two adjacent cells. Um, now, if you see the transverse tubule, which is a transverse tubule is the invagination of the plasma membrane deep within the cell itself. Uh, and the transverse tubule interacts with a little sliver of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is really the endoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells. And these two together makes a dyad, a big transverse tubule. And also note the transverse tubule is on the Z line. Z line here, so this is the A and the, this is the I and the A band. So again, we can see the intercalated disc in through there, and uh, in the lateral sides of these, there'll be a gap junction for communication to occur uh, to synchronize the contraction of the different cells. Here we see a triad, which is a transverse tubule and part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, which would regulate calcium. Uh, cardiac muscle, we can see where some of these discs have been pulled apart. So this is where the cells would be. This is the nucleus. The nucleus is usually one cell, one nucleus, sometimes two nuclei. As a rule, one. And here you can see 
the lipofusin, and of course uh, the A and I bands of the sarcomere. Now, in addition to having the veins and arteries, uh, uh, we also have lymphatics. And here we see a, a large lymphatic, and you can see it's full of lymph fluid where the artery and vein have been cleared of this fluid uh, by the perfusion of the tissue. But the lymphatic uh, vessels also have valves in them that uh, prevent the backflow of fluid. Now, uh, when we looked at the intestinal villi, we saw this large structure in here, and actually it's a central lacteal. That is a lymphatic, a lymphatic that carries fat from the gut uh, to the bloodstream. And we can see it again. These are the central lacteal, um, and there's another bill long central lacteal, uh, which is located in the lamina propria uh, below the epithelial cells that we see lying in the gut. Again, we see the central lacteal. This is different than uh, the capillaries. This is a nice capillary right in through there. Um, you can see some macrophages in through there, but here's a central lacteal that we're speaking of. Now, in the spermatic cord, in addition to uh, the arteries uh, and the veins, we see some lymphatic fluids of uh, vessels too. So here's lymphatics, uh, which is carrying blood, a uh, fluid, back to the, to, the, to the bloodstream. And here we see a lymph node and a lymphatic vessel that uh, was, uh, if you inject something here locally, it will follow the lymph vessel and get into the regional lymph node. From the lymph node, it goes back to the thoracic duct. And from the thoracic duct, it goes back to, uh, to the heart uh, on the, the, the right side of the heart. So lymph vessels function to return uh, protein, fluid, and blood cells to the blood. So whatever leaks out, go to the lymphatic, go back to the thoracic duct, back into the bloodstream. It also uh, transports secretions, hormones, antibodies, things like that. It also transports fat, neutral fats that it gets from uh, the GI tract. So here we see a thoracic duct in a human and a, a characteristic of thoracic duct, it has a lot of connective tissue and some smooth muscle. And the smooth muscle spirals around. So you, you really just see a little bit of it as if, if you cut straight across a slinky, you would not get a complete circle, and that's kind of what we see. But this is smooth muscle, and then this is connective tissue. A higher mag of that showing you the gray connective tissue uh, and the smooth muscle fibers. Again, it'll be lined by uh, endothelium. So in summary, you have a host of blood vessels that do various things. You've got those that resist pressure, uh, the arterioles, it's a source of peripheral resistance after that point. There is no longer a pulse uh, through the capillaries or in the veins. The velocity uh, uh, increases and decreases with the beating of the heart. And then finally, it levels off and it gets the slowest uh, in the capillaries where you have the greatest area, uh, cross-sectional area of, of blood vessels. And that's where you have the gases and waste exchange to occur and then finally it comes the areas reduce it down as you go to veins and when you get to vena cava you can actually have a negative uh, pressure in through there so again the wall of the blood vessels are adapted for uh, physical requirements that is if it's mechanical factors a high pressure they have to uh, be have a thick wall to withstand that an elastic wall to be able to recall you lose that elasticity, uh, elastic uh, layers with time, and so you get a little arterioles. You wouldn't have uh, elastic tissue at the very end, but you will maybe have a couple muscle cells. And then the metabolic needs, you just have capillaries. And here we have the parasitic venules and capillaries in through there, and this is where you get edema to occur. And then you go back to uh, 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 venules and then uh, muscular venules and then veins, and here you pick up some uh, elastic tissue as well as a little thicker. So the wall 
is modified based on what's the function uh, of that. If we continue with questions that's on the midterm uh, uh, didactic exam, here's one sixteen. Cardiovascular system provides multicellular animals with needed mechanism to collect waste from cells, true, transport waste to excretory organs, true, distribute informational molecules, true, hormones or informational molecules, the answer is E, which is R, true, about the cardiovascular system. Tone increases caliber of the lumen of arteries and veins. No, tone reduces the luminal caliber. The uh, Vasoforsorum provide nutrients to walls of large vessels. True. Autoregulation of blood flow in arteries is controlled by the attached nerves. False. It wouldn't be autoregulation if the nerves uh, were responsible for doing it. It's autoregulation because it regulates uh, itself. Uh, which capillary type matches the organ in which it is located? Continuous brain? Yes. Sinusoidal uh, glomerulus? No. Fenestrated spleen? No. Uh, in the glomerulus, you had a fenestrated. In the spleen, you have sinusoidal. So the answer is A. Which is or true uh, about a variation in microvasculature? Contractions of precapillary sphincters enhance blood flow through capillaries. False. A portal system provides systemic um, uh, modification of blood composition. Yes. Uh, false. That's false. It's local, not systemic. The med arterial shunts blood through the capillary bed. True. So the answer is C. Med arterioles uh, shunts blood. The lymphatic system returns protein, fluid, and blood and cells to the blood. True. Uh, lymphatic system have valves for bidirectional flow of fluid. No, it's unidirectional. That's why you have valves. Um, the lymphatic system has anchoring devices to keep the vessels closed. No, it has anchoring devices to keep them open. So the answer there is A.